Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So we will be discussing a problem that appeared in the Lead Code Weekly Contest 268. It is range frequency queries. This problem has uh, appeared in uh, many contests uh, and in uh, different platforms like Code Chef, Code Forces, Hacker Rank. But uh, and there are also a lot of variations of this. And uh, I'll be discussing uh, the basic. Uh, you know, the this problem is a basic version of it. So I'll be discussing this and uh, if you didn't know how to solve the problem or uh, you want to know the solution, then you can watch this video. Okay, so basically what we have, we have to design a data structure to find frequency of a given value in a given subarray. So we will be given three parameters that is left, right and value. There will be three parameters. So the to this function int query, the arguments are left, right, and val value. And also we will be given an array, array of numbers. And now we need to tell the frequency of this element value in the subarray. That is this, that they're showing the array from left to right, inclusive, left and right are inclusive. So obviously the nav approach will be traverse the array from left to right. I mean, from index, whatever this left that is given now to index right in the given array and check if the element array of i is equal to this value, increment the count and return the count. So time complexity of that solution. So for the nav approach, for the nav approach, the time complexity will be uh, O of right minus left plus one. Basically you can say O of something like n. So it'll be some linear time. Okay, but the problem is, and this is not bad though. This is not bad, but the problem is C. For each query, it is going to take O of N. So for each query O of N, it is going to take, if we have the nav approach, but the number of calls, that is number of queries can be 10 power five. So then it will lead to TLE. Because if we have at most 10 power five calls, for each call, we can afford only log n time. So we need to find a solution which has log n time complexity for each query. So for each query, it should be uh, log n. So that when you multiply it by 10 power 5, it will be something like a n log n solution in uh, overall perspective. Okay. So for each query, I need log n. So I can't use nav approach. I need to use better solution. So whenever log n comes to my mind, I always think of something like a binary search. So in C++, we will have a binary search, you know, there are different methods like upper bound. Upper bound is there and we have lower bound. So what is upper bound, lower bound? So lower bound is, it will find the index of that element which is greater than or equal to our value. Index of that element, which is greater than or equal to our value. So that is what lower bound. It will find that element also. You can find the element if you say star of lower bound, it will return the value present at that index. All right. And upper bound is, it will find the value of the element that is strictly greater than our uh, value that we're considering. So I think uh, this is pretty straightforward though, but still I'll take examples and explain now. So how will we use lower bound, upper bound in this problem? That is the only thing now. So what I thought of was we can have something like, you know, uh, unordered map. We can have an unordered map and this map is going to map the element with its indices. So I'll just reduce my size. So map is going to be something like this int vector int. So something like this, the map is going to be okay. So what is this int vector in that means for each element in the array, I will have a vector which will represent the indices at which the element is present. So let us uh, see with example, what do I mean? So now we are talking about a log n solution. 
in which we are going to use a unordered map, which is going to be of form int vector of int. All right. So what is this? So let us take this, this example. They are saying the array is this. So the array is this, and these are the queries. See, these are the queries because this is representing left, right, and value. So this is one query. This is another query, and this is the array. You can see from their explanation also. So what is the array? Let us write it down. 12, 33, 4, 56, 12, 33, 4, 56, and uh, 22, 2, 34, 33. 22, 2, 34, 23. Thirty-three, twenty-two. So this is the array. So when we are given this array, what I will do? I'll take an unordered map. So I'll take an unordered map. Let us call it MP. And what I will do for each element, I will make a vector of its indices. So suppose MP of twelve, if I take. So what will MP of 12 represent? So in the, where all 12 is present in the array. So I'm taking zero based indexing. So it will be zero, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine, all right. So MP of 12 will be that. And now what will be MP of four? MP of four represents all the, uh, the it represents a vector which uh, has all the indices of occurrences of four. So four occurs at index two, anywhere else four occurs, no. And now suppose I say MP of 34, what is that going to be? 34 is occurring here as well as here. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. 10. Okay, so like this for each element, not only 12 or whatever examples I've taken, I've just taken few. For each element, we'll make map like this, fine. Okay, then what, what will happen then? So basically, see, the entire problem is just about this, this query function. Query function will be given value and will given left and right. Left and right will be given. So what we can do, we can use upper bound, lower bound now, because when we have used unordered map in STL, all the values will, uh, you know, and in the vector, especially see in the vector, all the values are sorted, all the values for a particular elements vector. So suppose we say MP of 12, the corresponding vector, all the values are sorted. So when all values are sorted, we can use upper bound, lower bound. So suppose now I have value four, and I want to find the frequency of four in the sub array from, uh, what is the example given? One, two. So from sub array one, two, I want to find uh, all the, this thing, uh, occurrences of four. So this is my left, one is left and two is right. And my value is four. So now what I'll do, I'll check in MP of four. See MP of four is what? It is a vector representing indices of four. So uh, that is going to be what? Two. So vector is only two. It has only one element, which is two. Now I will use lower bound left and upper bound right. What do I mean lower bound left? Lower bound left, uh, see left is one. Nah? So I'm saying that what is the index of the uh, element that is lower bound of this left. Similarly, what is the index of the element which is lower bound of this right? So now I have changed the problem from frequency of the value to finding uh, the uh, you know count of indices. I have changed the problem now. I have changed my approach, which is instead of finding frequency of this value, I will store all the indices and I will find out uh, the frequency of indices from left to right, which is essentially the same thing. So I will use upper bound of right. I'm using upper bound of right because the upper bound is the uh, 
uh, index in which the value is greater than the element. And I think you will already be knowing if you're doing C++ uh, in STL, if you use upper bound minus lower bound, you will get the frequency of element. I think I've already explained this in one of the videos. I'm not sure exactly which one, but many of you will be knowing now upper bound minus lower bound is frequency of element. So that same concept I'm using, but we are using on indices. It is the same thing. Instead of finding out uh, frequency of value, I'll just find out for indices. But one thing to be careful is we have to use upper bound for right indices right index and lower bound for left index. Then only we will get the frequency or how many indices are there in that subarray. If you use lower bound of right index, many people might do this mistake. They will say lower bound of right minus lower bound of left. No, that is wrong. I'll tell you why that is wrong. Because when you say lower bound of right, na, you are not considering duplicates. For example, I'll give a simple this one explanation for this. See, just consider any random array, any random array, which is like a one, two, four, 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 four. Now, suppose uh, I want to find out, uh, leave this example. For now, this example, leave it. I just want to find the frequency of four. So frequency of four, you know, what is it? It is upper bound minus lower bound, upper bound of four. So upper bound of four will give this index two. Or, sorry, lower bound of this index, uh, lower bound of four will give this index two and upper bound of four will give this index, which is because uh, there is no value that is greater than four in the array, which will lead to this index. So this minus this is actually the frequency of four. Na? Now, if you take lower bound minus lower bound only, then it will result in zero in this case. So you should take upper bound of right index because right index is always greater than left. And in case of duplicates, we have to also consider duplicates case. So which is this problem? So if I take upper bound of four minus lower bound of four, it will give me the frequency. So only thing in this problem is instead of finding out directly frequency of this value, we will have indices because now every query will have time complexity of log n. Earlier, what used to happen was we had to sort the array. If we directly apply lower bound, upper bound concept on the array, we have to make it sorted. Now we are not guaranteed it is a sorted array. Nobody has guaranteed us the array is sorted. But because we are storing the indices in sorted manner, we can directly apply lower bound, upper bound. So instead of taking unordered map that is int vector. So instead of taking this kind of a map, you can directly take uh, an array of indices. Directly you can take array of indices and uh, you can do the same concept, upper bound, lower bound. Correct. So that is also fine. So I'll just show the code now. See, take a unordered map. All right. And then in this function, what we are supposed to do is for each element in the array, okay, say MP of array of I dot pushback I. What does that mean? For this particular element, I'm making a vector. Okay. I have a vector which is going to store the indices of all the elements. Uh, indices of uh, this uh, uh, element, wherever this element occurs, that index I'm going to store. And now in this query, I'm saying, I'll first find out the index of upper bound and I will subtract it from index of lower bound. But see here, upper bound I'm taking right, index of upper bound of right and I'm going to subtract it from index of lower bound of left. That will give me the correct frequency. And see here, I'm using MP of value dot begin because MP of value is the vector. MP is not the vector. MP here is the unordered map. MP of something is a vector and upper bound, lower bound, because we're finding on indices, it should be done on a vector and it is automatically sorted because 
we are traversing the array from start to end na so all the values will be sorted order for each and every element so that is what i did and that's the solution that i used so as you see it is accepted all right so you can do this problem even without the uh, unordered map you can take array of indices so let's see for this query it is saying 1 2 left is 1 2 is right and we are trying to find the frequency of 4 so in mp of 4 we have to so if i find out upper bound of right so what is my right say 1 2 4 na 1 2 4 is the query so 2 is my right what is upper bound of 2 in this in this concentrate on this vector upper bound of 2 will be because nothing is greater than 2 here it will point to index 1 and what is lower bound of 1 lower bound of 1 will be the element that is greater than or equal to 1 so greater than or equal to is 1 uh, 2 here and what is index of 2 it is 0 so 1 minus 0 see now 1 minus 0 that will give me the frequency of how many indices are present but this indices number is corresponding to how many fours are present how many this value is present so that is what is upper bound lower bound concept this co concept helps in so many problems so just be careful and learn that well so that's all for this video i hope you understood the explanation please share the video to all your friends subscribe to the channel if you have not yet hit the bell icon like the video it will help the algorithm and share it with all your friends so until the next video take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye